Hello and welcome by another video of the Orchid Saga. And today I want to uh, repot those four beautiful orchids that I recently did buy from uh, Petron Orchids Belgium. And I uh, thought I would take advantage of those beautiful new roots that some of them are starting to grow, actually three of them. And I hope the other one, it's the Workhousei, the Peperata will start making new roots quite soon, but I will give that a repot as well because those roots who are showing on the pot are fairly new I think and I hope they will branch and that new growth should uh, make some new roots quite soon I think. So I know we'll do that as in my uh, orchid room and I uh, this is the place that I work with when I potting up my orchids or I repot them. And in the back we have a, a little kitchen there that I can use where I do flush and clean out the roots in the sink. And uh, it's a little bit messy now but I had some new pumice coming in so I did uh, clean that up so I can use it now. And I have already some water uh, ready to flush uh, the pots when I have up out of my new orchids. And um, this is where I uh, like to uh, get them out of the pot. This is not very clean, but it's dry, so it's okay. And uh, I have my other um, materials around me. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm ready to set. Oh, and before I forget, I have underneath here my up potting materials. So I can really easily grab them. So I will uh, grab my uh, big tripod and I will uh, set you guys in and we will start uh, repotting these four new beauties. I think uh, I'm ready. I put on my gloves this time. One of the uh, repottings that I have on my video, I did forget them and there were sort of worms in, in the pot, so I did regret that and probably uh, learned my lesson. I also have uh, my alcohol ready to uh, disinfect my um, scissors and such. And I have my hydrogen here in this green little bottle for uh, cleaning out the roots. So let's um, start uh, getting them out of the pots and have a look. I'm going to start with this zygo, this beautiful zygo. And yes, I'm going to repot it while it's in bloom because I have at least one new root there starting. So like I said, I will take advantage of that as much as I can. And uh, so yeah, let's start with the zygo. But first I need to uh, get those flower spikes uh, loose from those uh, stakes. Yes, that was the word. <laughs> Took me a little while. Get them out of the way. Let's have a look. They're going through a lot, I know that, and they probably will be in shock a little bit. But I am the kind of grower I like to have uh, to get it over with as soon as I can, so the arc can really start to establish in this new growing envi uh, environment. Because shock after shock is not a good idea. If, if they can take it, I try to, uh, like I said, get it over with all of those things. So the transport, getting into my uh, orchid room, getting a little bit adjusted to my climate, uh, thereby I already start to uh, repot them as quickly as I can. Just, just basically to get it over with, like I said. This one has quite some roots, it's beautiful. I do see some mold there, it's not a big problem. It's, I do see some uh, slow released fertilizer. The downside is, it's a good orchid, there's nothing wrong with that. But with this amount of roots, it's very hard to repot it and do not lose basically every, every root, especially on Saigo. So this is facing a rough time. She will get through, my other cycles did as well. So I'm confident enough to say that it will, uh, we will succeed. Well, well, confident enough, yeah, we probably should be. We obviously will uh, keep our eyes out on her and I will do my uh, updates. But still, I'm going to, probably going to lose quite a lot of those roots. I will try to be as gentle as I can. Once again, it's a psycho. They really hate repotting. Messing around with the roots basically, but yeah, that's what we do when we repot them. Yeah. 
try to shake it off as much as I can. I will uh, have it on the, the tab as well for the looser parts and that really helps to get all those teeny tiny parts out but I try to get the big uh, big stuff, the big clumps of uh, media out with my fingers and this is a grown, grown off from a seedling, this was in a teeny tiny pot I don't know if you can see it, but it has the shape of that pot still. And I'm a bit afraid there's some media left in. Yes, it's moss, so I have to take it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's moss, so I have to take it out. Moss, moss and self-watering, especially older moss, it's not a good idea in my experience. So yeah, I will lose those roots probably, but I will make Try to make a fresh start as much as I can. I thought I felt a root snapping, a new root, but luckily it wasn't <laughs> a root. It was an older sheet, but I felt something underneath my finger. Because that can happen quite easily when you start to repot. You put your fingers on those new growths and they will snap off quite quickly. And I need those roots. I'm pretty sure I do. Because this is... Yes, there you go. Oh, that, that little bulb came off quite easily. I, I had no idea. But, and those roots were probably already dead if I... Yeah, some of them. Yeah, I think I will do the rest under the tab. So, and then we will back and have another look at the root assist, uh, system. So this is what I have so far. There's a little bit of media in there, but that's okay. It's not that much anymore. I have uh, quite could remove quite a lot of it. Uh, we still luckily have uh, that new root in this one. It was uh, starting to re-grow uh, again, and we have obviously one there as well. And um, yeah, I did say that I'm going to repot it while it's in bloom and obviously for, obviously for a, a Saigo that was to be expected because this one is still growing. This cane is not fully matured, but this is the uh, habit that Saigos have. They are still working on a new cane and they also start uh, putting out their uh, spikes already. So it suits a uh, Saigo, I think, to repot it. Uh, if you really have, of course, in, in uh, while it's blooming, or it makes sense, let, uh, let, uh, it don't necessarily suit them, but uh, it makes sense, because that's the period of, uh, of cycles that they grow. Try to get this other sheet off. Before I put on the hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, and we have, it's not a bad one, it's the, uh, there was a little bit, I don't know the English name for it. There's one um, sort of bark thing with a lot of little teeny tiny legs, that one is, um, doesn't do your orchid any harm and I saw that crawling around there, but I not really like it, but it doesn't do uh, any harm to your orchid, it really eats on um, decaying material, so it's not very har harmful. But I will give it a uh, hydrogen shower and it should have decided if it wants to stay or go, but I really need to do this because otherwise I probably will have a, uh, a snail infestation. I, uh, in my experience they come with snail eggs quite often and I don't want to have snails, bush snails I'm referring to in my uh, growing space. So yeah, that bug needs to find another home, probably. Yes, I use quite a lot of it because there are quite a lot of roots and I try to get in everywhere and I now let it rest for a few minutes um, 
while I start working on the other ones, probably even longer. But this is really uh, doing its job, I can hear it. So I'm going to put it on the counter, I lay it down there and it can uh, do its thing. So okay, I didn't use my scissors, I didn't need to, so those are still clean and we can move on to the another one. And this is the Lindsay, Lindley eye, not the Jenkins eye, <laughs> I did make, messed it up quite there. Uh, Big time, but um, yeah, the Lindsay Lee eye. Let's have a look at this one. It feels very hard inside of the pot. Probably have a lot of roots, yeah, kinda. Yes, and we have also some newer roots starting just there. So this is a beautiful, beautiful time to repot. Yes, and this new growth as well. So I can uh, can clean this up quite well because we there are new roots coming, and this is always a hard part, but it needs to be done. So therefore, I sometimes like the little bit younger plants. They haven't have most of the times do not have that huge amount of roots in a pot, which makes repotting, especially into another system, a bit easier, if you ask me. But I, I cannot complain, obviously, because this is uh, how we should receive our organs, with quite some roots. So, that's there. On the other hand, this plant is stronger, probably will take off uh, even better in a new setup, because it, it's just healthy, as far as I can tell from the look at the uh, at your roots yeah, and this is always a bit of a rough part I don't like doing it but I have to and believe me I try to avoid it as much as I could in the beginning but I had a lot of bush nails so and Back, uh, that was what my berry Ola and the, uh, that plant left uh, was left after that attack. I did uh, clean it up, li li uh, left quite some media, and uh, because I thought, oh my god, the roots are dying off, and I'm breaking the roots, so I put it up, and we hope we it will survive. But yeah, there were a lot of uh, bush snail eggs there, so within a few weeks, the orchid was rootless, anyways, and not in a good good way. So it. Rather have a little bit of damage than a lot of uh, yes, bush nails in my greenhouse. So therefore I'm, yeah. I try to, uh, if I choose to break some roots, because I just have to, I think. But it's never a nice repotting. I like to up-pot my orchids. Then I just can clean up the root system but they also are uh, already set in their system, so I can up pot them, give them a bigger pot, and that's it. This is, um, yeah, like cutting flower spikes when your orchid's not growing so well. You probably have to do it, or already maybe have to have a situation where you had to cut off the flower spikes. In the beginning, I really hate it. I still dislike it, of course, but I did it so many times, and I had so many beautiful reblooms because I did it, so I now just, do not think about it too much, just cut them off. If the orchid needs it, we want to have the plant longer. Those blooms will come back. The plant not necessarily will. So therefore I uh, try to play it on the safe side. and Choose uh, to keep my plant as healthy as I can. Some bark isn't a problem, a little Bit. This piece, for example, is very attached, so I'm probably gonna leave that part. That's okay, it's just a little bit. But I try to get off as much as I can. Yeah, that, not all of these roots are alive anymore as you can probably see I hope you can so I'm gonna cut off some you don't need them and they are now in the way so really are uh, those roots are on the 
end on the first uh, on the seedling section basically of this arbit. So they uh, serve their purpose and they can go now. Yes, it makes it a little bit easier. <coughs> Like this, for example. I hope you can see it. I'm sorry. You see? It's a broken older wood. It doesn't do much anymore. Here's another one. And we're starting to get it quite clean. So yeah, I will uh, run this under the tap now and then I will give this a spray of hydrogen. Well, actually, I will give it hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide straight away. It's fairly clean, so I can use it uh, straight out of the bottle. The hydrogen, of course, but I don't need to uh, wash it off. That's what I, try, I was trying to say, I'm sorry. But um, so I'm just going to give it a uh, big spray of hydrogen. Try to put it in between the bulbs as well. Beautiful hiding places for stuff we don't want. Let me check. Yes, this, this is beautifully. So I'm going to uh, lay her in the sink as well. Actually on the, actually on the counter uh, top. I now have to uh, spray my scissors with alcohol. And I'll let them dry by air. And we'll grab the next one. This is the Lelia Xentia. I'm sorry, Xentia. I see a new road tip uh, here, so that's beautiful. I hope I can save that one. It feels like this one has quite some roots as well. Yes, there we go. Okay. And yeah, we have some uh, branching roots as well. So this one, same story. I will damage the roots, I know, but I cannot avoid it. So I try to do it as soft as I can, by shaking it off. But yeah, some roots are attached a little too much, so I need to push them off soft, as soft as I can. But that's sometimes a bit hard. There's some attached sometimes. Like I said, it's beautiful, but if you want to grow them in a completely different system, it can be kind of annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I'd rather have this than uh, unhealthy plants, don't get me wrong. But like I said, younger plants, you have to wait sometimes a little bit longer. A little bit, some years. <laughs> but a bit longer for the blooms. But on the other hand, they like to take uh, a new setup a little bit easier in my experience. But still... These guys will as well. This is also a fairly young plant. It's two years from blooming, so this one should shouldn't have much problems. But it has uh, the older roots might, but I think we will have some new roots quite quite quickly in the near future. And baby, these roots will uh, continue to grow. That would be the same, uh, basically the same effect, because those roots will adjust as well in the new system. I 
beautiful, beautiful bark on this. It's uh, fairly new. Nothing wrong with that. But I don't grow in bark anymore. Only for Argus that I uh, am giving away. I put them in bark, grow them on them in bark sometimes. Because uh, most of my friends do not grow in, in self-watering. They have a few Argus most of the time. So therefore I... Uh, they just keep them in bark. If I had five or ten orchids, I probably would grow in bark as well. But with this amount of orchids, 300 plus, I, uh, I really prefer the self-watering. It makes it easier then. Because of the adjusting of the pH, water, etc. It's easier to water them uh, in self-watering, for me at least. But before, when I started growing orchids, I did soak them for a half an hour in, in a, a bit of water, took them out, and I did it every week. I didn't notice if they were drying up earlier on, it just was starting to grow in orchids. But now I know that some orchids need more water, and some orchids can use um, a little bit more drying time, let's say 10 days instead of 7. Yeah, we have to learn all new things right so that's that's okay but uh, then I found uh, same hydroponic and that's started that that ball rolling for me and I really really enjoy it even though I now have self watering it's basically the same so but I really enjoy growing my orchids in self watering pots uh, so Saw something running there. Oh, this one. Where? Oh, here. Let's try to get this off. Something, some bug or something was getting behind this piece of bark. So I tried to take it out just to be safe. It's obviously not a bush snail because they don't walk that quickly. <laughs> but what are you? Uh, oh. They know their hiding places, I, I can say. Maybe it did fall into into my uh, pot already. I have no idea, but I'm not able to find it anymore. Yeah, I will give it a shower of hydrogen just to be safe. <laughs> Again, like I said, I always get something extra in the pot, <coughs> especially when Argus uh, bought in from nurseries. It's okay, but I want to deal with it as quickly as I can because I don't want bugs in my greenhouse. And I'm saying it's okay because I can understand if you have so many Argus, you just cannot check them all individually. So yeah, it happens. It happens. This one is doing its job as well. Okay, and I meant the hydrogen. Before I forget, I will disinfect my scissors again and my pruners as well, just in case if I need them. This is a habit I try to uh, get you get try to get uh, into, uh, especially when I started uh, getting more orchids. Just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. <laughs> as much as I can. And not overdo it, but with uh, tools that I use, I try to uh, keep them as clean. And I have another one. It's not a bucket, it's a spider. That is running for its life. I don't mind spiders in my pots, but I must admit, I'm not really a big fan of spiders. But they, uh, they help keeping some control on the other pests, so therefore they are very uh, handy to have. But not my favorite animals. Oops. Yeah, you see, this is moss. When I uh, did the unboxing, I, I thought first it was um, roots from a fern or something, but this is this is actually a live moss. It's, it's okay. So probably I will have some moss in this pot uh, later on when I uh, put it in self watering. So there are always some spores left, and that's okay.
This one uh, did grow quite a, quite well, root-wise in this pot. Did grab hold on those bark pieces quite uh, quite fir firmly. Once again, I need to uh, break them. Not, not really, I try to avoid to break them, don't get me wrong, but I probably will end up breaking them. Yeah, we have some older roots there that can go off. Yeah. Let's shake some off, some bark. Sometimes I use two hands. One, I hold uh, with one hand the root, and other hand I try to get off the bark. Yeah, this root is broken. I'm sorry. I really am. Just made a clean cut on that root. Hopefully it will uh, branch out. But this is why I don't fill up that reservoir straight after repotting because they I damage the root system so much. They are covered in wounds. I uh, imagine. I let those wounds heal and the archer tell me when it's ready to go, grow into the system by getting new roots down in that pot. Branching roots, for example, new roots. And as soon as I see happening, that happening, I will start filling up the reservoir. But now I, I just wait because I'm damaging the root system so much, sadly. But once they are get established in my self watering, I'm so happy that I did it. But at this stage, I'm thinking, oh, what am, am I doing? Why? Why? <laughs> but I know once it's in there, once it's happy in a new, in its new home, I never have to be as brutal again. And that's the goal. Never ever have to do this again. That's what I like. Also, probably the most of self-watering that inorganic media. If it is, is attached to the roots, you can leave it, you just have to up part it and you're done. So beautiful. I really, really love it. And that's why I can keep so many orchids. The watering is so easy in comparison to when we have a lot of orchids growing in bark or moss, etc. For me at least. And with the water indicators, it makes it even more uh, easy because I only have to watch the water meters and they tell me if they need any water in the reservoir again uh, or not. So that's why I can keep up with the watering with that many orchids just beside my daily job. And at the moment, we have a bird shelter, for those who didn't uh, know that already. Um, so I have to be here seven days a week at the moment. And from 9 o'clock in the morning to about 9 in the evening, I'm not always in the bird shelter itself, we live next to it. But I always need to be there, like for example now if the phone rings or if the bell rings, somebody has a uh, sick bird for us that we need to take care of. I need always be, uh, be around. Or on occasions if I have to do my groceries or I want to visit a friend, which I do not do very often, you can imagine. <laughs> but let's say I uh, would, or I would go for orchid shopping, of course, in a greenhouse, uh, in a greenhouse, in the garden center. I always need to ask somebody who will uh, be here, and so I can leave uh, for a few hours. There's always, basically, I need a babysitter for all the animals, <laughs> and that's okay. It's it's really beautiful work. But um, therefore I love this system so much. I can now have this amount of orchids because the watering is so easy. Otherwise I absolutely wouldn't have the time. 100% sure. And I also start filming, which I really like, which also takes up its time, but it's so much fun. And I th yeah, I think people starting to, uh, starting to like them, starting to find my channel. And it's highly appreciated. I really do, do not mind to take the time for it, try to make as many videos as I can, especially if you have questions, I'm really open to that, some ideas. Yeah, this is a hobby and I, we need a hobby, at least one, don't we? Takes my mind off, off things and uh, yeah, I really need that. 
and you probably you may have seen him but we also have uh, horses and ponies Aaron is one of them I filmed him a few weeks back so that's another hobby that I really enjoy and obviously making art I have some art videos on here as well that's how I started the channel in the beginning but I do not have the time at in uh, this uh, part of the year most of the times it, when it's winter and we have some months that get a little bit um, less busy in the shelter I have some time left and I really like to uh, to paint and to draw as well but I do I only have one I think one painting with an orchid in yeah I think I have one you, should, you may imagine that I have a few more, well probably, maybe someday, but I uh, like to paint animals and uh, do portraits, animal portraits, but also from people. And I get asked on occasion if I do, uh, whoops, this one is maybe stuck, commissions, but I don't do that anymore. Again, time issue, but yeah, it is what it is. And it's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna leave those, they are really attached. Well, while I was chatting away, I hope you didn't mind that, <laughs> um, my chatting, but um, I think I did clean up this quite, quite well, but we have some older roots that I will um, cut off. Let's do that now. And I need to focus for that, so therefore I Stop the chatting part for now <laughs> because I know myself. And it happened to me before, it probably will happen again where you think you have an old root, you cut it, and it seems to be branching, or it's it may be a this little bit discarled. This car this color uh, had a, a little bit of funny color to it, let's put it like that. Discoloration on it that was the word we were looking for. You cut off, but it seems to be a good root. Um, so therefore I like to squeeze into them and I can feel if they are dead or not. If they feel mushy, you can if they feel hard like this one. This one is obviously alive. This one you can see it already is uh, dead if you see the rings. But um, if you feel it and it feels soft and m mushy, you can take it off. Because it doesn't serve any purpose anymore. It only will help getting your rotting uh, rotting levels quite high in your pots and you don't want that. So just don't be afraid, cut them off, you really really don't need them. And it already starts to look better without those dead roots. And this is a these roots are tangled up quite a bit, but these are dead. This one isn't, but it's strangely broken, so I cut it out there. I'll leave a clean cut. Let me see. Yeah, it's a bit funny growing root. But uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a spray of hydrogen as well, hydrogen peroxide. Once again just to be on the safe side. Clean it up. And what I try to do is to get those sheets off if I can because I see a, a round shaped thing there. Probably a new eye but it may also start some new roots there, so I try to get this a clear way to the path for those roots, try to make a clear way as much as I can, so if they start to shoot out they will be able to find their way into the path quite easy. Yeah, this is obviously a uh, eye, a new growing eye. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave this sheet on because it's right behind that eye and don't want it to damage that. But if we would have some new roots there, they probably can shoot out quite nice. Now let me show it to you guys. You see, I put a sheet off there. I don't know, but I think the new roots will come from there. Yeah, and this is still sizzling. So, 
I will clean up now my mess and uh, we will be back and uh, puff him up in their new homes. And I saw that buck running. Let's try to find it again so I can show it to you guys that I wasn't imagining things. I think it did go underneath this one. Arr, where did you go? People will not believe me. Oh, here it is. There. Next to my finger, that black black thing. I can see that? Yes. Ugh. I don't know what it is. But one thing I do know, I don't want it in my pots in my greenhouse. So I will take this outside and put it in a container as quickly as I can. I will be back. <laughs> As you can see, we now have them uh, lay, uh, laying, on, uh, laying down on the table. Uh, I cleaned the roots as much as I could. But I'm going to uh, stop this video uh, here for now and make this a part one. And I will make a part two where we start parting them up. Uh, the reason is because it was already quite uh, long with the un uh, unpotting and, and uh, cleaning up the root system. So therefore I... Uh, yeah, this will uh, get uh, otherwise a way too long video. So therefore, I hope you understand. This is part one. Part two will be uh, up on my channel quite quickly. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. And uh, for now, uh, like I said, thank you. And I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.